Being that we live and travel full time in an RV, we're often approached by others who have comments, questions, or rants regarding what you cannot have in an RV park or a campground. Yeah, we've stayed in our share of RV parks and campgrounds over the years. So in this video, we're going to share some of the things that we've come across that are not allowed in certain places. Something that often comes up is the certain type of vehicle. Length is one of them. It's not the most uh, popular thing that we hear people talking about, but we do get a lot of discussion about it at times, uh, particularly people that have longer vehicles and not being able to fit into a RV park or campground. But that, this is probably the, the most understandable uh, one having to do with a uh, type of vehicle. Yeah, the next one would be age. Now this is a big one because a lot of parks have a 10 year age limit. And this can, a 10 year old RV can look better than a two year old RV and a two year old RV might look like a 20 year old RV. Yeah. So um, that one is kind of subjective. So. We've run into parks where they will ask if the vehicle is more than 10 years old to email a picture or text a picture or something yeah. of their RV so that they can take a look at it before you get there and, uh, you know, or pay for a spot and then get there and find out, no, they're not yeah. going to let you in. Yeah, so. we have seen people turned away after reservations and everything because yeah. the online reservation system wasn't up to par and asked the right questions, or at least the questions that the park itself wanted to know. But the, yeah, like Susan was inferring, the, the that's it's kind of subjective. You know, you could have a, a vintage uh, uh, RV or it yeah. could just be one that you've taken really good care of and and that says a lot about people I, I think if you're you got a 20 year old vehicle yeah. that looks pretty new and nice and it's been kept well that says a lot about you but the, you know the, most of this happens in private parks I don't think we've ever encountered anything like that in uh, public or, or government type uh, places State but County, yeah. yeah definitely the uh, private parks tend to be the ones that do this but there is uh, usually a way around it if you contact them and explain the situation if you really want to take the time to do that and you can send a picture of your vehicle or something like that to them via email that usually uh, works at a lot of places they're basically trying to keep the mobile meth labs and things like <laughs> that out of there and they have to make a blanket rule so that they don't just uh, you can go you can't you yeah. can go you can't they try to uh, keep from uh, having to do that type of thing I think but Anyway, 10 years doesn't seem, you know, yeah. quite fair, you know, yeah. to a lot of people, but that especially comes up. now that ours is 5 years old, <laughs> uh, 10 years old just really doesn't seem that old. So, yeah. yeah, that's that's kind of a tricky one there. Another one is the actual type of vehicle. For instance, uh, some campgrounds only allow um, RVs that are fully self-contained. So some vans or class B type motorhomes that are RVs that aren't fully self-contained would not be allowed in those. And so yeah, that's and that's unfortunate because there, there are a lot of uh, banners out there, you know, people that uh, have really made some nice uh, home on wheels out of <laughs> vans and, and they're really cool and we like them a lot and they, they get turned away. But you know, these are the kind of things you just want to know in advance and maybe try to pitch your case a little bit if yeah. you really want to be there. And, and sometimes it, it works out really well, especially if they know you're, you're good people and, and you have a, a good vehicle. It's not going to fall apart as you drive across the lot. Another thing that comes up a lot, I would consider like camping accessories. Things like canopies, tents, dog fencing, things that are outside of your RV that are not allowed. Yeah, these are mostly like structural type things or things that they feel like are going to uh, uh, inhibit the uh, experience for other people around you or maybe run up the cost or something for the park a little bit. We've definitely run into parks that don't allow, again these tend to be private parks, some of them are, are state though, uh, that don't allow structures like uh, big canopies or something when you're trying to get shade. Yeah. Uh, they. they they prefer that you use your awning. Um, another thing would be like uh, tents. Some places will let you put tents around your RV and have guests come over and use them or just some type of bug tent or something, but other places won't let you have them at all. Yeah, and sometimes this has to do with uh, the climate that they're in. If it's a really windy place, these things can go airborne quite easily We've and actually be dangerous. So 
they just have a blanket. We don't allow them because it can be um, a danger. Another um, reason that they might is just sometimes the owner of the campground just doesn't like how it looks. So yeah, you some know, of them it can be think as easy it, as that. Some of them think it looks like a yard sale blew yeah. up or something like that. They just want to try to keep the clutter down. And again, some places they just don't want to go around from place to place and say you can have this but you can't have that so they just try to get these blanket rules that try to keep some of that down another thing in this category would be like dog fencing dog crates things like that uh, mostly the fencing I think that some of the places frown on uh, putting that up they usually want you to just use the designated uh, pet areas and then what else would there be and then so, believe it or not portable hot tubs yeah. and swimming pools <laughs> yeah <laughs> seen people that have actually hot tubs that they can blow up and carry with them and for um, obvious reasons I guess water usage and uh, damage to grass or things like that pools and and portable hot tubs are often not allowed yeah we've seen that in state parks and private parks and we understand people taking them with them some sometimes people just want to take a little kiddie pool with them and fill it up it's you know 80 90 degrees Fahrenheit or more and they just want to throw a little pool out there to let the kids play in it especially at parks that don't have any type of water nearby um, it's understandable and we've actually been at state parks where they've made a, uh, a concession you know during very hot weather yeah. and allowed people to just go ahead and do it they just uh, kind of just didn't police it so uh, but anyway these are all things that you might want to think about before uh, you head into a park just ask them if, if they allow certain things yeah before you set up your giant dog fence or your big canopy make sure that they're okay with it wherever you're at big issue with regard to what you can have at an RV park at a campground is your pet we've run into this quite a bit where certain types of animals are not allowed and it, ha it hasn't affected us directly but we know it's affected a lot of people yeah we haven't really um, come across very many places where pets just generally would not be allowed but most of them do have some type of restriction on certain breeds and what those breeds are can definitely vary from park to park so if you have a dog like maybe a pit bull a rottweiler a doberman things like that you definitely want to check and make sure that they're going to be allowed at the park or campground that you're planning to go to yeah we've seen people who had reservations that they made 10 months prior got there very happy and unloaded their dogs and they turned them away yep. <laughs> so this is definitely something that you want to find out if the park is going to allow there's a lot of things surrounding dogs too just noise and all those kinds of things in general you just want to make sure what the you know what the rules are and how it's going to be in the park we've been to some that <laughs> had signs up all over we'll ticket you you know uh, what was it 50 bucks or something like that if your dog barks yeah. or we'll ask you to leave immediately that type of thing so just kind of feel it out and find out what uh, they're all about with regard to having a dog with you and, and what breeds are allowed. Yeah, you can definitely get a sense of based on their rules and how extensive they are, how dog friendly the park is probably going to be. So definitely check into that. Another thing that a lot of parks do not allow these days is drones and even some other type of RC devices like uh, maybe remote control uh, airplanes or boats and things like that on the water they just uh, I think the main reason is uh, public safety is what they probably cite they just don't want these things falling out of the sky onto people yeah. or their property and so they just uh, don't don't allow them An another reason might be that they just don't want to ruin the experience you know you're sitting there watching the Grand Canyon and all of a sudden a drone flies right yeah. in front of you it, it's, it's not the best thing I think most drone uh, pilots are very responsible and they usually don't want to fly I, I know in my case I don't want to fly around where a lot of people are anyway or any of those types of areas I just want to be out and away from everything primarily because I, I just want to uh, concentrate on piloting and not being uh, bothered yeah. you know with uh, people coming up and not that there's uh, that they're doing anything wrong they're just curious but uh, it's it's definitely just better for me to be away so yeah you definitely the way need to concentrate it. when you're doing that because you know most of these drones are not inexpensive so you yeah. want to take care that you're you know doing what you need to do and and if you're distracted by someone talking to you then you know that could easily cause a bad situation so yeah before you get out your drones or your remote control vehicles 
you just want to double check and make sure that that's going to be all right wherever you're at. Yeah, definitely. I can remember one time I was flying it out over the Columbia River and it was uh, very uh, nerve-wracking for me <laughs> because I had like $1,500 in the air hovering over you know, and people came up and started talking to me and I just asked them if I could just land it first and <laughs> yeah. then we talked. So yeah, it can be a little nerve wracking, but good point. Too. Something that's probably going to be prohibited in pretty much all RV parks and campgrounds is going to be fireworks. And this is for obvious reasons, I think. Yeah, there could be uh, people injured by them flying off uh, in the wrong direction and hitting people. Uh, maybe even starting wildfires and we lose a lot of property and uh, there's been a lot of uh, well deaths associated with it and and just a lot of acreage a lot of forest burned down uh, from senseless uh, uh, firework explosions yeah, so it's, of, it's just not that important wild, wildlife has been lost and uh, it's just not a good situation they're also noisy and and a lot of people just don't like to deal with the noise of of having to listen to that and so you know for those reasons and the safety reasons I think it's probably a good thing that fireworks are not allowed in RV parks or campgrounds. Yeah and you know it, it's different for each uh, person but we like to go to a lot of these places because we want to kind of get away from the city and away from noise and away from things and so when you get there and there's loud parties and explosions and, and you know, all kinds of things like that, sometimes it's off-putting to people. And it, it's even uh, bothering people who would normally do those types of things. Yeah. They just do it at a different place where people aren't seeking sanctuary, you know. So, uh, but anyway, you know, do your thing, but just do it places that it, it's allowed and, and be safe and have fun, you know, because that makes it more enjoyable that way for, for all involved. Another thing to keep in mind along with the fireworks is that you might want to call ahead to the place that you're going to be camping or staying for a while and ask them if they allow campfires. This is something that especially during what's uh, deemed fire season in different locales, uh, you know, is going to be quite uh, frequently occurring. So you want to make sure that they're allowed at the time, what types of things that you can actually have. Some will allow you to still have these little uh, gas fireplaces mm -hmm. or uh, some type of um, grill or something that has a valve on it that can be shut off but they're typically not going to let you just have open wood fires and things like that during bands so that's yeah a that's good thing definitely to find something out. to check into especially if a uh, campfire is something that's integral to your camping experience that you really enjoy because a lot of times it's there'll be too. there'll be bands on fires and you think oh the weather is cooled off it's rained it's it's going to be fine to have a campfire but no the ban is still in effect so you yeah. definitely want to make We've sure been that some you uh, checked on that before pouring you pouring down rain and there were there were bans yeah. so you, you just you just want to check it especially if it's you know what would be considered uh, fire season in your area check because even if it's raining they might just say yeah, there's still too still. much dry or they haven't lifted the band for whatever reason so it could be a holiday weekend and they just didn't get around to it so <laughs> whatever you just want to make sure that you you learn that because you know people do like having campfires and making s'mores and doing those kinds of things that are fun but call ahead and make sure that it's acceptable at the time those are a few of the things that we've been made aware of that may not be allowed in certain rv parks and campgrounds Comment, let us know if you've heard of some of these or maybe there's some that we didn't mention that you've experienced yourself or maybe we mentioned something that you've never heard of. Comment, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And please remember to share, subscribe, and click on that little notification bell. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Some RV parks and campgrounds don't allow you to wash your vehicles, but they might permit you to do so if you pay them a small fee or if you hire an RV washing service that provides their own water.